Wait, what? He was in the front yard and somebody just pulled up and took him? Yeah, policemen or rangers would come, pull up, uh. just grab these half-coloured kids or coloured kids and then chuck them in the truck and then take them. I'm Paula Froelich. Take a journey with me to explore the unknown and discover the unexpected. This is Abroad Abroad. The adventure starts now. Like many countries formed under colonialism, Australia has a pretty horrible track record of mistreating its indigenous people, the Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders, many of whom have become known as the Stolen Generation. Why do they call it the Stolen Generation? Because it was a whole generation of kids that was taken from their homes. Basically, you either had to be black or white. You couldn't be brown or in the middle. So they would consider you in the middle and you would have been... Taken. Not kidding. Up until 1970s, by law, any indigenous child who looked like he or she had any amount of white ancestry in them could be snatched from their families and forcibly assimilated into white society. My grandfather, my mum's father, he was part of the stolen generation. He was really young, taken out. How old is he? Maybe a year old when he was taken. Oh, wow, so he never knew his real family. He knew, because, um, when he was taken from the front yard of where they lived. Wait, what? He was in the front yard and somebody just pulled up and took him? Yeah, policemen or rangers would come pull up, uh. just grab these half-coloured kids or coloured kids and then chuck them in the truck and then take them. As the little boy was being forced into the back of a truck, his aunt, a young child herself, sacrificed her own freedom so he wouldn't be alone. When she heard the commotion of him crying and screaming, she ran and voluntarily just jumped on. Light-skinned children were often adopted by European families, while darker-skinned children, like Deanne's grandfather, were sent to missionary camps. Most of the missions were based on islands, so... And what they'd take you, send you away, let you grow up there in a mission and learn about, you know, the Catholic side of it and um, a European way. You'd learn English and then... Try to make you forget your family? Yeah. You never got to see them or...? Yeah, you never ever got to see them. There was no such thing as visiting hours. He spent the rest of it on the island till he was like 18, 19. When he came off, he knew... 18 or 19 years old and basically a prison. Yeah, <laughs> on an island. Just yeah. for being born? Yep, yeah, just for being born light. To protect their children, some Aboriginal families resorted to extreme measures using the sap of the milkwood tree. My great-grandparents painted my grandmother because she was fairly light. Yeah. Painted her all black, put the sap on her, hit her in the billabongs, creeks, rivers, and they never found her. So she, they did that so that they wouldn't take her and put her in the schools? Yeah, so it was a whole stolen, a whole generation that was stolen away. Oh. But lucky for the tree and the paint, my grandmother wasn't, so. Huh. <laughs> wow. Deanne's grandmother dyed her skin until her 20s, and she was one of the lucky ones. It's believed that over 50,000 children were stolen between the 1860s and the 1970s over a hundred years later, when the laws were finally changed. But the ones who were taken have suffered ever since. With no identity, family, or bonds, many now suffer from homelessness, alcoholism, and other issues. Thank you for sharing your story. That was really powerful and amazing. And uh, your grandparents sound really wonderful and strong. I don't know how my grandparents would have reacted. Oh, it's good to share.